So this investment program is called the Pay It Forward program. If you were to cross dress Lee, <laughs> I have a wife and two children. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's actually quite correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. That's what he was going to Today we're back in the centre of Gawla, uh, mm -hmm. the Poetic Justice Cafe. See the guys that own it, they're on the Pay It Forward program. Um, but also to meet some of the other Pay It Forward customers who uh, are the guys that connected us with um, the young boy Blake uh, and the charity that we're helping uh, with his rare disease AHC. So we're going to go uh, have a catch up, see how the planning is going for their event, see if there's anything else we can help with. And then I think we're going to go see Blake and have half an hour with him and his mum and dad. <laughs> so we are on the way to see Blake. Yeah, We've got we Kelsey and Rashida. In the car. Uh, left, left here. As in like. As the in left way. <laughs> That's in the left way. <laughs> Just go. Tell us a bit about the AHC and what exactly it is because it's quite a rare condition, right? It's not something many people have heard of. Yeah, so um, his AHC basically alternating hemiplegia, so he becomes paralysed down one side of the body. Mm -hmm. And in not all the time, just during his episodes, sometimes, so it's alternating because one day it might be on the left, the next time he has it, it might be on the right. And during the paralysis, you know, he can't move his arms, legs, his eyes. The worst thing I hate is his eyes twitch um, really yeah. badly. Like his Today Tonight episode, you'd yes. see some really nasty attacks where his eyes are going crazy. Yeah. Why well, they initially diagnosed him with epilepsy because they thought he was having focal seizures, but the newest EEG proved that there was nothing on his brain seizure-like. And then they've since gone and checked and he has this mutation of one of his genes. Mm -hmm. So they could confirm the diagnosis of AHC. But yeah, it's like, it's just, yeah, I suppose it's like being coming paralysed. Yeah. Um, and then there's four times now in his life where he's become fully paralysed head to toe. Can't even hold his head up. Like right now, he would just have to lay on the floor yeah. because he can't even, it's like, yeah. it's worse than a newborn, have not mm. being able to hold their head up. And he can't swallow, so we have to put the nasogastric yeah. tube in to feed him and... Um, mm -hmm. We're not really sure what to do. We in the school holidays, we tried to go out and do some fun things. Like we went to flip out, yeah. and we went to a play cafe. Yeah. And we were playing with his cousins one day, and yeah. each dark time, yeah. he had episodes. Oh, and I think it was to do with that Uber stimulation. There was kids yeah. everywhere, and he loved it. Yeah. So he got that pain of he can't join in, yeah. like everyone else. So he, yeah. and then it sends him into paralysis. So oh even those gosh. things that he should be able to enjoy, yeah. you know. It's a bit much. Yeah. Does she react when he has an episode? Like, Taylor? Does that affect her? Yeah. No. But my oldest daughter, who's 10, like, she suffered some pretty severe yeah. trauma. Yeah. Because it's not as bad now, it seems weird. It's like epilepsy is not as bad in, our, in the situation he's in. His epilepsy wasn't as bad as his AHC. But when he had ever his what we thought was seizures, we had to rush him to hospital and drag him up and try to stop them. And we were in hospital, like say from September last year when I was like 38 weeks pregnant with her to January this year, we were in hospital most of that time. We'd come home and there was twice we got home, we had to turn around and go show back because he started up again. Um, but when we thought it was seizures, my oldest daughter, because it would always be when he ends up work. So, Asha would be the one waiting for the ambulance at the door. She'd be the one running around getting me midazolam and getting me all the rescue meds and what, seeing it. And sometimes yeah. I tried to hide it from her, but that was no good because she'd just get more stressed if you try and hide stuff from her. Yeah. She's very clever, my ten year old. So she's really suffering. And she's having therapies and stuff now to try and help her cope. It takes a lot to upset, like, trust me. When he cries, 
Yeah. 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 I think that's what makes me survive. Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. that's why those days where he cries all day, you yeah. know, he's really wishing yeah. he's scared yeah. or he's in pain. Yeah. So that's I think what makes that so hard, and that's how you know that he's really bad because he never cries. this business like oh, okay so oh I think I always wanted to run my own business like um, I've just always been that sort of person that's wanted to always run my business came to Adelaide and um, there was no clothes shop you know we got invited to a few um, events and um, there was just no dress shop in Gaula without going to like Tea Tree Plaza wasn't it Tea Tree Plaza or in the city and then you end up so like, I think by you know impulse you buy like a hundred and forty dollar dress and you only wear once <laughs> i think i just love the high concept um i've hired my first dress like in perth when the sort like concepts all like started coming out so when i came here and f f saw that there was no niche no um dress shops that can cater like formals and so forth like that especially because of the fashion that keeps changing every time um it was just something i really thought this is great i love the niche i want it so we started off just with a hundred garments this time last year. Um, just the ones that I just saw like, you know, sourced out myself. Yeah. And then so we launched out the consignment side of things and then everybody started bringing clothes in. And um, so we've got now, I think over 500 on rotation. Wow. Yeah. If you were to cross dress Lee, <laughs> Which which outfit would you pick for him? Oh, honey, I've got the number for him. Oh, seriously, what do you think? So I'm thinking something a little bit disco ball beaded mm. or the sort of like 80 shimmery sequence. Which one do you like, Lee? Do I have a choice? <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. Maybe you can About your experience at Chic Boutique? <laughs> no, I just never needs to go anywhere other than this. <laughs> a fashion show. It's a fashion show that was created in support of a little boy called Blake and he has a condition called AHC which is actually really rare um, in children. I think it's one in a million children get it and he's actually the only child who is known with this disease in South Australia. So I think this event is a really great initiative in support of him and we're a big sponsor at this event. So yeah. With paralysis. So we would just like to say a massive thank you to Sheeds. Uh, she has done 
so much. We met, I don't even really know how we met, through Facebook, friend of a friend. Initially it started, she offered to donate some vouchers for one of our events, which turned into her, her and her wonderful husband selling so many raffle tickets and getting donations from his work, to then her wanting to put on a fashion show that fundraised for Blake, which was amazing. So I just want to say thank you because you're amazing and we're very grateful for everything that you've done. We also want to say thanks to all the major sponsors, everybody that's donated anything for tonight. We are so grateful. And I want to say a massive thank you as well to Connexus. Um, Connexus were not only a major sponsor for tonight or today, um, but they've actually given us an incredibly generous donation on Blake's GoFundMe page. Um, so we just want to say a massive thank you to you guys for that. We're really, really grateful. Today, I'm going to introduce to you a very exciting investment that we're making to all the small businesses in Gorlom. So this investment program is called the Pay It Forward Program. We officially launched last week and it's a national program and Gola has been selected as the first town to pilot this national program. Connexus and also any other participating partners will be investing our services and products to Gola for free for 12 months. And instead of paying us, you're paying that value forward to another business or someone else in this room. And that someone else will pay it forward to another business. That will create a rippling, rippling effect of economy growth within this town. At the same time, we'll also be bringing in educational events to teach you digital skills that you can use to help grow your business and the community. So when we first started this business, uh, we had no idea the impact that the people of Gola would have. I mean, people like Rashida, Raf, Ali, and Blake has really inspired us to shift our mindset and our mission. So for us, although we're just another telecoms provider, we really want to focus on the altruistic aspect of giving back to the community and helping regional people and helping regional businesses. And what other telco could actually see that? 